Paul David Hewson, KBEOL, born the 10th of May 1960, known by his stage name Bono, is an Irish singer-songwriter, musician, venture capitalist, businessman, and philanthropist. He is best known as the lead vocalist and primary lyricist of rock band U2. Bono was born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. He attended Mount Temple Comprehensive School where he met his future wife, Alison Stewart, as well as schoolmates with whom he founded U2 in 1976. Bono soon established himself as a passionate frontman for the band through his expressive vocal style and grandiose gestures and songwriting. His lyrics are known for their social and political themes, and for their religious imagery inspired by his Christian beliefs. During U2's early years, Bono's lyrics contributed to the group's rebellious and spiritual tone. As the band matured, his lyrics became inspired more by personal experiences shared with the other members. As a member of U2, Bono has received 22 Grammy Awards and has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Bono is well known for his activism for social justice causes, both through U2 and as an individual. He is particularly active in campaigning for Africa, for which he co-founded Data, Eden, The One Campaign, and Product Red. In pursuit of these causes, he has participated in benefit concerts and met with influential politicians. Bono has been praised for his philanthropic efforts. He was granted an honorary knighthood by Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom for his services to the music industry and for his humanitarian work, and has been made a commander of the French Ordre des Arts et des Lettres, Order of Arts and Letters. In 2005, Bono was named one of the Time Persons of the Year. Outside the band, he has recorded with numerous artists. He has collaborated with U2 bandmate The Edge on several projects, including, songs for Roy Orbison and Tina Turner, the soundtracks to the musical Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark and a London stage adaptation of A Clockwork Orange, and the refurbishment of the Clarence Hotel in Dublin. He is managing director and a managing partner of the private equity firm Elevation Partners, which has invested in several companies. Early life. Bono was born in the Rotunda Hospital, Dublin, on 10 May 1960. He was raised in the northside suburb of Finglas with his brother who is eight years older than Bono by their mother, Iris Ne Rankin, a member of the Church of Ireland, and their father, Brendan Robert Bob Hewson, a Roman Catholic. His parents initially agreed that the first child would be raised Anglican and the second Catholic. Although Bono was the second child, he also attended Church of Ireland services with his mother and brother. He went to the local primary Glasnevin National School. Bono's mother died on 10 September 1974, after suffering a cerebral aneurysm at her father's funeral. Many U2 songs, including, I Will Follow, Mofo, Out of Control, Lemon, and Tomorrow, focus on the loss of his mother. Bono attended Mount Temple Comprehensive School, a multi denominational school in Clontarf. During his childhood and adolescence, Bono and his friends were part of a surrealist street gang called Lipton Village. Bono met one of his closest friends, Guji, in Lipton Village. The gang had a ritual of nickname giving. Bono had several names, first, he was Steinheg van Heisen Aleg bang bang bang, then just Heisman, followed by Houseman, Bon Murray, Bono Vox of O'Connell Street, and finally just Bono. Bono Vox is an alteration of Bonavox, a Latin phrase which translates to good voice. It is said he was nicknamed Bono Vox by his friend Gavin Friday. He initially disliked the name, however, when he learned it translated to good voice, he accepted it. Hewson has been known as Bono since the late 1970s. Although he uses Bono as his stage name, close family and friends also refer to him as Bono, including fellow band members. After he left school, his father Bob Hewson told him he could live at home for one year but if he was not able to pay his own way, he would have to leave the house. <laughs> Personal life Bono is married to activist and businesswoman Alison Hewson 
The couple have four children: daughters Jordan, born the 10th of May 1989, and Memphis Eve, the 7th of July 1991, and sons Elijah, Bob, Patricius, Guji, Q, the 17th of August 1999, and John Abraham, the 20th of May 2001. Bono was a close friend to In Excess frontman Michael Hutchins. Bono is almost never seen in public without sunglasses, as he suffers from glaucoma. During a Rolling Stone interview he stated, I have very sensitive eyes to light. If somebody takes my photograph, I will see the flash for the rest of the day. My right eye swells up. I've a blockage there, so that my eyes go red a lot. So it's part vanity, it's part privacy and part sensitivity. In the late 1980s or early 90s, Bono bought a top-floor duplex apartment in Manhattan's San Remo apartment building from Steve Jobs for $15 million. Jobs had renovated it for his own use, but never moved in. In 2004, Bono was given an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from the University of Pennsylvania. In May 2010, Bono suffered a spinal injury while preparing for a U2 tour, and was taken to a German clinic in Munich for emergency neurosurgery. The North American leg of the tour was postponed and rescheduled for 2011. Bono was named one of the 17 Irish artists to be proud of by the Irish Post on the 9th of April 2013. Time magazine ranked him at the 8th place on its list of the most influential celebrities. In 2013, he was the only person from the music industry in the top 10. Bono's work as an activist, which is due largely to his Christian beliefs, began in earnest when, inspired by Live Aid, he traveled to Ethiopia to work in a feeding camp with his wife Allison and the charity World Vision, an evangelical Christian humanitarian aid, development, and advocacy organization. With regard to Bono's 2013 declarations in interviews published and videotaped of his faith in Jesus Christ, he states that Christ was either who he said he was, or he is, a complete and utter nutcase. As early as 2005, Bono was invoking this argument, identified as the Lewis Trilemma. On 16 November 2014, Bono was involved in a high-energy bicycle accident when he attempted to avoid another rider. Bono was rushed to New York Presbyterian Hospital, while Cornell Medical Center's emergency department and underwent multiple X-rays and CAT scans, followed by five hours of surgery. Bono suffered fractures of the shoulder blade, humerus, orbit and pinky finger. Orthopedic trauma surgeon Dean Lorick, M.D., stated that Bono was taken urgently to the operating room where the elbow was washed out and debrided, a nerve trapped in the brake was moved and the bone was repaired with three metal plates and 18 screws." Bono posted to U2's official website, "...as I write this, it is not clear that I will ever play guitar again," as reported in Cycling Weekly. Musical career U2. On 25 September 1976 Bono, David Evans, The Edge, his brother Dick and Adam Clayton responded to an advertisement on a bulletin board at Mount Temple posted by fellow student Larry Mullen Jr. to form a rock band. The band had occasional jam sessions in which they did covers of other bands. Tired of long guitar solos and hard rock, Bono wanted to play the Rolling Stones and Beach Boys songs. The band could not play covers very well, so they started writing their own songs. The band went by the name, Feedback, for a few months, before changing to, The Hype, later on. After Dick Evans left the group to join another local band, The Virgin Prunes, the remaining four officially changed the name from, The Hype, to, You Too. Initially Bono sang, played guitar and wrote the band's songs. He said of his early guitar playing in a 1982 interview, When we started out I was the guitar player, along with the edge. Except I couldn't play guitar. I still can't. I was such a lousy guitar player that one day they broke it to me that maybe I should sing instead. I had tried before, but I had no voice at all. I remember the day I found I could sing. I said, oh, that's how you do it. Single quote quote. When the Edge's guitar playing improved, Bono was relegated mostly to the microphone, although he occasionally still plays rhythm guitar and harmonica. As of 2006, Bono has taken piano lessons from his children's piano teacher as a means to improve his songwriting. Bono writes the lyrics for almost all U2 songs, which often have social and political themes. 
His lyrics frequently allude to a religious connection or meaning, evident in songs such as Gloria from the band's album October and I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For from the Joshua Tree. During the band's early years, Bono was known for his rebellious tone which turned to political anger and rage during the band's war, the Joshua Tree and Rattle and Hum eras. Following the Enniskillen bombing that left 11 dead and 63 injured on 8 November 1987, the provisional IRA paramilitaries threatened to kidnap Bono. IRA supporters also attacked a vehicle carrying the band members. These acts were in response to his speech condemning the Enniskillen bombing during a live performance of Sunday Bloody Sunday. The singer had been advised to cut his onstage outburst from the Rattle and Hum film, but it was left in. Also featured in the film is footage of Bono spray painting a monument during an outdoor performance. Bono was forced to pay a fine. U2's sound and focus dramatically changed with their 1991 album, Ektung Baby. Bono's lyrics became more personal, inspired by experiences related to the private lives of the members of the band. During the band's Zoo TV tour several of his stage personas were showcased, these included The Fly, a stereotypical rock star, Mirror Ball Man, a parody of American televangelists, and McFisto, a combination of a corrupted rock star and the devil. During performances, Bono attempts to interact with the crowd as often as possible. He is known for pulling audience members onto the stage or moving himself down to the physical level of the audience. At the Live Aid concert in 1985, Bono leapt off the stage and pulled a woman from the crowd to dance with her as the band played Bad. In 2005, during U2's Vertigo tour stop in Chicago, he pulled a boy onto the stage during the song And Cat Dubh, Into the Heart. Bono has often allowed fans to come on stage and perform songs with the band. Bono has won numerous awards with U2, including 22 Grammy Awards and the 2003 Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song, The Hands That Built America, for the film Gangs of New York. During the live broadcast of the Golden Globe ceremony, Bono called the award, Really, really fucking brilliant. In response, the Parents Television Council condemned Bono for his profanity and started a campaign for its members to file complaints with the FCC. Although Bono's use of Fuck. Violated FCC indecency standards, the FCC refused to fine NBC because the network did not receive advance notice of the consequences of broadcasting such profanity and the profanity in question was not used in its literal sexual meaning. In apparent reaction to the refusal, a group of congressmen introduced House Resolution 3687, the Clean Airwaves Act. On 8 December 2003, aiming to amend Section 1464 of Title 18 of the United States Code to provide an explicit list of profane words and phrases and remove ambiguity that could enable certain uses of the phrases to be allowed. The bill was not enacted. The incident has had a long-term impact in the handling of profanity on live broadcasts. In 2005, the U2 band members were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, in their first year of eligibility. In November 2008, Rolling Stone ranked Bono the 32nd greatest singer of all time. In 2015, the magazine ranked Bono and The Edge at number 35 on its list of the 100 greatest songwriters of all time. U2 were criticized in 2007 for moving part of their multi-million euro song catalog from Ireland to Amsterdam 6 months before Ireland ended a tax exemption on musicians' royalties. Under Dutch tax law, bands are subject to low to non-existent tax rates. U2's manager, Paul McGuinness, stated that the arrangement is legal and customary and businesses often seek to minimize their tax burdens. The move prompted criticisms in the Irish Parliament. The band later responded by stating that approximately 95% of their business took place outside Ireland, and that they were taxed globally because of this. Bono was one of several wealthy figures whose tax arrangements were singled out for criticism in a report by the charity Christian Aid in 2008. Topic. Collaborations In addition to his work with U2, Bono has collaborated with Frank Sinatra, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Luciano Pavarotti, Sinead O'Connor, Green Day, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, Patti Smith, Tina Turner, B.B. King and Zuccaro. 
He has recorded with Ray Charles, Quincy Jones, Kirk Franklin, Bruce Springsteen, Tony Bennett, Clannad, The Coors, Wyclef Jean, Kylie Minogue, Carl Perkins, Herbert Gronemeyer, Jay-Z and Rihanna, as well as reportedly completing an unreleased duet with Jennifer Lopez. On Robbie Robertson's 1987 eponymous album, he plays bass guitar and vocals. On Michael Hutchins's 1999 posthumous eponymous album, Bono completed a recording of Slide Away as a duet with Hutchins. Bono collaborated with African stars Debange, Waje and Amitala Jalade Ekane for a women's empowerment song entitled, Strong Girl. Bono and The Edge also wrote the music and lyrics for the Broadway musical Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark. On 25 May 2011, a single titled, Rise Above One, by Reeve Carney featuring Bono and The Edge was released digitally. The music video was released on 28 July 2011. Philanthropic work Bono has become one of the world's best-known philanthropic performers and was named the most politically effective celebrity of all time by the National Journal. He has been dubbed, the face of fusion philanthropy, both for his success enlisting powerful allies from a diverse spectrum of leaders in government, religious institutions, philanthropic organizations, popular media, and the business world, as well as for spearheading new organizational networks that bind global humanitarian relief with geopolitical activism and corporate commercial enterprise. In a 1986 interview with Rolling Stone magazine, Bono explained that he was motivated to become involved in social and political causes by seeing one of the secret policemen's ball benefit shows staged by John Cleese and producer Martin Lewis for the human rights organization Amnesty International in 1979. I saw the secret policeman's ball, and it became a part of me. It sowed a seed. In 2001, Bono arranged for U2 to videotape a special live performance for that year's Amnesty Benefit show. In 1984, Bono sang on the Band Aid single, Do They Know It's Christmas? Feed the World. A role that was reprised on the 2004 Band Aid 20 and 2014 Band Aid 30 singles of the same name, Bob Geldof and Bono later collaborated to organize the 2005 Live 8 project, where U2 also performed. Bono and U2 performed on Amnesty's Conspiracy of Hope tour of the United States in 1986 alongside Sting. U2 also performed in the Band Aid and Live Aid projects, organized by Geldof. Since 1999, Bono has become increasingly involved in campaigning for third world debt relief and raising awareness of the plight of Africa, including the AIDS pandemic. In the past decade Bono has met with several influential politicians, including former United States President George W. Bush and former Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin. During a March 2002 visit to the White House, after President Bush unveiled a $5 billion aid package, he accompanied the President for a speech on the White House lawn where he stated, This is an important first step, and a serious and impressive new level of commitment. This must happen urgently, because this is a crisis. In May of that year, Bono took U.S. Treasury Secretary Paul H. O'Neill on a four country tour of Africa. In contrast, in 2005, Bono spoke on CBC Radio, alleging then Prime Minister Martin was being slow about increasing Canada's foreign aid. In 2004, he was awarded the Pablo Neruda International Presidential Medal of Honor from the government of Chile. Time magazine named Bono one of the 100 most influential people in its May 2004 special issue and again in the 2006 Time 100 special issue. In 2005, Time, named Bono, with Bill and Melinda Gates, a person of the year. Also in 2005, he received the Portuguese Order of Liberty for his humanitarian work. That year Bono was also among the first three recipients of the TED Prize, which grants each winner a wish to change the world. Bono made three wishes, the first two related to the one campaign and the third that every hospital, health clinic and school in Ethiopia should be connected to the Internet. TED rejected the third wish as being a sub-optimal way for TED to help Africa and instead organized a TED conference in Arusha, Tanzania. Bono attended the conference, which was held in June 2007. In 2005, he recorded a version of Don't Give Up with Alicia Keys, with proceeds going to keep a child alive. On 3 April 2005, Bono paid a personal tribute to John Paul II and called him 
a street fighter and a wily campaigner on behalf of the world's poor. We would never have gotten the debts of 23 countries completely cancelled without him." Bono spoke in advance of President Bush at the 54th Annual National Prayer Breakfast, held at the Hilton Washington Hotel on 2 February 2006. In a speech containing biblical references, Bono encouraged the care of the socially and economically depressed. His comments included a call for an extra 1% tithe of the United States national budget. He brought his Christian views into harmony with other faiths by noting that Christian, Jewish, and Muslim writings all call for the care of the widow, orphan, and stranger. President Bush received praise from the singer activist for the United States increase in aid for the African continent. Bono continued by saying much work is left to be done to be a part of God's ongoing purposes. Also in 2005 Bono, Ali Hewson and designer Rogan Gregory co-founded the Eden fashion label, Nude, spelled backwards, to suggest both natural and the Garden of Eden. It was intended to help bring about positive change in Africa through a fair trade-based relationship rather than by direct aid. On the 15th of December 2005, Paul Thoreau published an op-ed in the New York Times called "The Rock Star's Burden," cf. Kipling's "The White Man's Burden," that criticized stars such as Bono, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie, labeling them as mythomaniacs, people who wish to convince the world of their worth. Thoreau, who lived in Africa as a Peace Corps volunteer, added that the impression that Africa is fatally troubled and can be saved only by outside help, not to mention celebrities and charity concerts, is a destructive and misleading conceit. Elsewhere, Bono has been criticized, along with other celebrities, for ignoring the legitimate voices of Africa and turning a global movement for justice into a grand orgy of narcissistic philanthropy. In 2007, Bono was named in the UK's New Year's Honours list as an honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire. He was formally granted knighthood on 29 March 2007 in a ceremony at the residence of British Ambassador David Redaway in Dublin, Ireland. Bono also received the NAACP Image Awards Chairman's Award in 2007. On 24 May 2007, the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia announced that Bono would receive the Philadelphia Liberty Medal on 27 September 2007 for his work to end world poverty and hunger. On 28 September 2007, in accepting the Liberty Medal, Bono said, When you are trapped by poverty, you are not free. When trade laws prevent you from selling the food you grew, you are not free. When you are a monk in Burma this very week, barred from entering a temple because of your gospel of peace, well, then none of us are truly free. Bono donated the $100,000 prize to the organization. Ngozi Okonjo Iwila accepted the award for the Washington based Debt AIDS Trade Africa. The organization Data Debt, AIDS, Trade, Africa was established in 2002 by Bono and Bobby Shriver, along with activists from the Jubilee 2000 Drop the Debt campaign. Data aims to eradicate poverty and HIV, AIDS in Africa. Data encourages Americans to contact senators and other legislators and elected officials to voice their opinions. Bono was a special guest editor of the July 2007 issue of Vanity Fair magazine. The issue was named The Africa Issue Politics and Power and featured an assortment of 20 different covers, with photographs by Annie Leibovitz of a number of prominent celebrities, political leaders, and philanthropists. Each one showcased in the issue for their contributions to the humanitarian relief in Africa. In an article in Bloomberg Markets in March 2007, journalists Richard Tomlinson and Fergal O'Brien noted that Bono used his band's 2006 Vertigo World Tour to promote his one campaign while at the same time U2 was racking up $389 million in gross ticket receipts, making Vertigo the second most lucrative tour of all time. According to Billboard magazine, revenue from the Vertigo Tour is funneled through companies that are mostly registered in Ireland and structured to minimize taxes. Further criticism came came in November 2007, when Bono's various charity campaigns were targeted by Job Selassie, head of African Aid Action. Selassie claimed that these charities had increased corruption and dependency in Africa because they failed to work with African entrepreneurs and grassroots organizations, and as a result, Africa has become more dependent on international handouts. Bono responded to his critics in Times Online on 19 February 2006, calling them cranks carping from the sidelines. A lot of them wouldn't know what to do if they were on the field. 
They're the party who will always be in opposition so they'll never have to take responsibility for decisions because they know they'll never be able to implement them. In November 2007, Bono was honored by NBC Nightly News as someone making a difference in the world. He and anchor Brian Williams had traveled to Africa in May 2007 to showcase the humanitarian crisis on the continent. On the 11th of December 2008, Bono was given the annual Man of Peace Prize, awarded by several Nobel Peace Prize laureates in Paris, France. Product Red is another initiative begun by Bono and Bobby Shriver to raise money for the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Bobby Shriver has been announced as the CEO of Product Red, while Bono is currently an active public spokesperson for the brand. Product Red is a brand that is licensed to partner companies, such as American Express, Apple, Converse, Motorola, Microsoft, Dell, The Gap and Giorgio Armani. Each company creates a product with the Product Red logo and a percentage of the profits from the sale of these labeled products will go to the Global Fund. In 2016, Glamour named him, Man of the Year, breaking the 26-year tradition that saw the Woman of the Year accolade reserved only for women. Bono was recognized for establishing a campaign called Poverty is Sexist, which is specifically aimed at helping the world's poorest women. Other endeavors In 1992, Bono, along with The Edge, bought and refurbished Dublin's two-star 70-bedroom Clarence Hotel, and converted it into a five-star 49-bedroom hotel. The Edge and Bono have recorded several songs together, exclusive of the band. They also worked on the score for the 2011 rock musical Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark. In May 2007, MTV reported that Bono was writing the foreword for a collection of poetry entitled, Third Rail. The book's foreword details the meanings of its poetry, stating, the poets who fill the pews here have come to testify, to bear witness to the mysterious power of rock and roll. Rock and roll is truly a broad church, but each lights a candle to their vision of what it is. The collection, edited by poet Jonathan Wells, contains titles such as Punk Rock You're My Big Crybaby, Variation on a Theme by Whitesnake, and Vince Neil Meets Josh in a Chinese Restaurant in Malibu after Ezra Pound. Bono is on the board of the Elevation Partners private equity firm, which attempted to purchase Eidos Interactive in 2005 and has since gone on to invest in other entertainment businesses. Bono has invested in the Forbes Media Group in the U.S. through Elevation Partners. Elevation Partners became the first outsider to invest in the company, taking a minority stake in Forbes Media LLC, a new company encompassing the 89-year-old business which includes Forbes magazine, the Forbes.com website and other assets. The terms of the deal were not disclosed, but reports said the stake was worth about €194 million. Euros, $250 million. The firm also owns a 1.5% stake in social networking site Facebook, originally purchased for $210 million. Although it was reported that Bono's stake was valued at approximately $1 billion in February 2012, a 2015 article in Forbes stated that this estimate was based on an incorrect attribution of shares. Bono was among those cited in the Paradise Papers after he was named as a passive minority investor in Nuda States, which bought a shopping mall in Lithuania in 2007 and transferred ownership to Nuda States 1 in Guernsey in an apparent attempt to avoid tax. Bono welcomed the subsequent investigation by the Lithuanian Tax Authority, stating that he welcomed transparency and had personally campaigned for it. Nuda States paid €53,000 in taxes and fines after the investigation was completed and Bono severed ties with the company. Filmography In addition to his acting credits Bono has contributed music to films, as part of U2 and other collaborations. Honours Officer of the Order of Liberty, Portugal, the 21st of April 2005. Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, the 20th of January 2007. Topic. See also. Timeline of U2. 
A. Bonoi, a species of spider in the genus Aptostichus named after Bono. References Footnotes Bibliography External links U2.com, official U2 website One Campaign, Advocacy and Campaigning Organization co-founded by Bono Eden, fashion label started by Bono and his wife Ali Bono at Allmovie Bono at TED Appearances on C-SPAN Bono on Charlie Rose Bono on IMDb Bono Collected News and Commentary The New York Times Works by or about Bono in Libraries' WorldCat Catalog